Oh, hey, it's Wes. I have some bad news. As you know, I bought the most popular gray card calibration devices on Amazon. Incredibly popular. And I have to break it to you. This isn't gray. This isn't gray. And finally, this, it's not gray. Let's get into that. How can something look gray, but not be gray? Well, this whole color calibration thing, it's all about precision. So right now, this camera that we're staring at right here is on daylight color balance. It's not quite perfect though, is it? There's a lot of stuff going around in this, going on in this room. Can't be 100% sure that, you know, this key light here coming through the softbox is really producing perfectly accurate white balance. I'm gonna go into our settings here, in my function menu. Oh, this smells awful. <laughs> and then we're gonna do some gray. Okay, now we are balanced to this gray thing. How do I look? Do I look color neutral? So that came in as 4,500K with uh, no specific shifts. All right, let's try again using this gray thing. Now, it's important to uh, make sure we're not getting too many reflections on it. You want it to look nice and matte when you're doing the calibration. So let's do that. Well, that didn't work very well. I mean, this is, this is pretty gray. I just cannot get my A7 IV to grab calibration on that. Let me try the white one. Yeah, for some reason the white one worked perfectly fine. Looks pretty good too. Our uh, calibration now is 4600 and G1. So we've shifted toward the green a little bit on that. Now let's try something else. We have a three and a half year old X-Rite color checker passport. Okay, now we have 4400 G1. It's pretty close. And now, let's give this a whirl here. The brand new Data Color Spider Checker Photo. And this is a similar folio design here. It's a little bit thicker, has a nice solid feel to it, nice thick hinge. Now, Data Color and x ray similarly recommend that you change these out every nine to 12 months because the colors might fade. These are just printed on paper and that's not sort of a, it's not a laziness thing. It's that printing on paper gives you the most accurate results. Depends on how much you use this and how much it's exposed to UV light. And that's why these color checkers are in opaque plastic. You close this up, it kind of freezes time to a degree, not entirely. Whereas printing plastic is incredibly difficult to get those colors right, and the plastic will fade as well. If you want super accurately colored plastic, let's have a look at these Pantone spools. They are ridiculously expensive, but there is a reason for that. It is very hard to do this, on, especially on like a mass consumer level, because you have to have such incredibly tight control over the mixtures and the plastic, and that's very hard to do over a large production run. Now, if we compare the x rite to the data color, you'll notice that the x rite is on very smooth paper. They're, it's a little bit shiny. Now, you're not supposed to touch this, but this is an older one. It's incredibly smooth. Just a little bit matte, a little bit shiny. Whereas, on the data color, we have this very thick textured paper. It's way more matte, a lot less shiny, which, as I mentioned before, trying to reduce the shines for more accurate results, that's nice. And also the matte finish is going to account for more of the ambient light in the room, instead of just one single reflection of the light. So you can see the light reflecting off the borders, which is the plastic piece that holds this in, but we're getting very little shine on the paper itself, so that's great. So let's give this one a whirl. Okay, and that one gave us 4,500 with, again, a green of one. Why are these coming out differently? Well, there are two reasons. But the first reason we're gonna talk about is that lighting is more complicated than you think it is. I can take this and I can turn it a little bit this way, I can turn it a little bit that way, up, down, 
back, forward. And my white balance is going to change every single time, just a little bit. That's a bit problematic. That's because my light is here, but I have some ambient light in the room. I have a kicker light behind me here. I mean, I have a black mist filter on here and that's going to change how light flares and affects things. Everywhere in this room is going to have a marginally different white balance unless I have just utterly controlled, like excessively controlled lighting and nothing in this room is anything other than a neutral white, black, or gray. That's not, that's not the case in the real world ever. That's our complicated answer. White balance is hard and it is more complicated than we ever think it is. But the other reason is this. This is not gray. These are not white or gray either. This is pretty freaking close, but it still isn't perfect. That perfect white slash gray is almost, almost completely unattainable, but some things get closer. So let's see how close things are. To do that, we're going to use this. This is the Data Color Color Reader EZ. So this is their cheaper one. There are some fancier ones out on the market as well. Let's turn this puppy on and see what empirical data we can create here. It's a little bit slow to connect. For some reason, the first time I connected to it, it was crazy fast, but uh, subsequent times, it is not exactly a speed demon. There we go. We have our color reader ready. We're gonna start with this gray, gray card. So press this button and we get a reading. Now, by default, it starts us out with uh, like paint swatch colors because this is designed more for a designer. Their higher end ones are a little bit more for critical work. But if we go over here, we can get an RGB value. And depending on where we place this, those numbers are going to change ever so slightly. But what I'd like to point out is that the variance between the green and the blue is four out of 256. Let's move on. The R, the G, and the B aren't exactly the same on this thing. Does it matter? Depends how uh, color critical your work is. Let's uh, go with this gray card here. Press the button. And here we have, yee, we have a shift between the R, the red, and the blue of eight out of 256. Let's move it around, try again. Again, that is eight. Let's try the white. Ooh, this isn't white at all, this is blue. <laughs> so this has a shift of 19 in the RGB spectrum. Yeah, so this looks like a white or gray card, but this is actually blue. And this gray card right here is also technically kind of a blue-gray. Mm, uh, let's try our brand new color checker here. We're gonna go on the gray to start out. And here we have a much more subtle color shift. We have a minus two on the red value. Let's try this one more time. And that gives us a minus three on the red value. That is a significantly smaller variance. Let's try the white, which is actually kind of a very light gray. It's not perfectly white. And here we have a variance of two between the green and the blue. That is a very small difference. But what about our old color checker? We're supposed to replace these every nine to 12 months. Mine, it kind of lives under a rock. I take it out very briefly, get a white balance. It's gone, it's back in the bag, it's closed. Let's see if it has changed much. Here we have a variance of three between the green and the blue. Let's take one more reading. This time we got a variance of four, not the worst, but not fantastic. Let's go to the, the white side here. Just a variance of two. Let's take one more reading. And I've no variance whatsoever, fantastic. All right, 
So it looks like my gray has shifted ever, ever so slightly. The light gray looking pretty solid still. So it seems like as long as you protect these from ultraviolet light, they do last pretty well. And I mean, you would hope that they do because they're expensive. Now, if you leave this sitting out a lot for doing color critical calibration, it's going to shift faster, a lot faster. But for me, it's in, it's out, it's back where it goes. Now, why is this significant? Well, number one, if we're just checking out our skin tones here, it's nice to have accurate colors in your videos. But number two, if you're a professional photographer, let's say you're doing fashion or design photography, that's where this comes in handy. You can use color checker software to fully calibrate your raw captured images for whatever crazy wacky ambient light you might be having going on. Even in a controlled studio setting, that light's not perfect. Different flashes have different color balances. You can get all the colors exactly dialed in so that if you're doing product or fashion photography, you can know that these colors are accurate. You send it to the client and they're like, oh, the blue is not quite right. You can be like, no, actually, this is fully calibrated. This is exactly what it looked like. Bada bing, bada boom. And not necessarily even just for arguing with clients, but for being able to have the confidence that you got it right, that your image is what it's supposed to be right at a camera. Now, unfortunately, this software is not optimized, not terribly useful for Capture One Pro. This is something people have been bugging Capture One and Data Color about for quite some time now. So unless you're using Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, this calibration system is not going to work fantastically, which is pretty disappointing to me as a Capture One user. And it's also kind of ironic because Capture One tends to be a more color critical application than Lightroom. People who are working in highly controlled studio circumstances, tethered shooting, high-end product photography, are often using Capture One. And so they have to do things a little more manually. So I would love to see that in the future very soon. Now, a lot of people will be using these to calibrate for brightness, luminance, based on 18% gray. So how are we doing for 18% gray? Well, that's pretty easy for us to find here. Now that we've already measured the RGB values, a normal 18% gray would be an eight, 118 on R, G, and B. So how close do we get? Interestingly enough, the slightly irregular quality-wise ANWEC cards, we get very close to our target gray an average of only 0.3% too dark. So for exposure, this is the best gray card that we have here. And then next up, we have our color checker passport, which is 2.5% too dark. Not that bad either. Our 12 by 12 from LightDAO, and this is 5.6% too dark. So we're kind of getting out of the realm of it being super useful for highly accurate color or luminance calibration. And then looking at this, the color checker photo, I feel like it was never their intention to use this for exposure calibration because this is 9.7% too bright, which is just outside of the realm of possibility for using as an 18% gray calibration. And it's kind of in the name here. It's called the Spider Checker Photo. This is not specifically designed for video work. This is not an 18% gray card. This is more for calibration of white balance and color. Is there a use for these thingamajigs? Well, I mean, yeah, they cost less. The variance isn't terrible. I don't know, this one was better than I thought it would be. I'm not sure how it's gonna last with some exposure to light. This blue card here, <laughs> this, this is not a good thing. Don't use this. If you're gonna be doing white balances, you might as well get the right tool for the job and get it done right the first time. What are your thoughts on white balance? Should we be using these cheapy little things? The nice thing about this is it rolls up and I'd like to say it's durable, but this is brand new and it's already ripped on the corner here. That's not cool. <laughs> If you really care about the color criticality of the work in video and especially in photo, 
do yourself a favor and get something that's actually color calibrated and not one of these janky things that aren't even white in the first place. If you need to check the colors of things, pick up one of these, links in the description down below. Honestly, I think I would recommend the more expensive version of this. If you have any questions or comments about that, you think color calibration is useless? Well, sure, let me know down in the comments below. We'll talk about that. But until next time, let's take some color accurate photos.